Suddenly, I've gone from being somewhat relatively attractive to at least a reasonable cohort of men who I've predominantly been dating like throughout my life to now suddenly being at the bottom of the food chain. <laughs> Let's just say that the realities of the matter, <clears throat> even though no lesbian would want to admit this and no lesbian community or group or microcosmic community within the broader lesbian community would like to admit it, um, black women who look like me are sort of at the bottom of the food chain <laughs> what what's happening what's going on i feel like z should go to tra like therapy for like victimization trauma yeah like she's definitely at the bottom of the food chain here in america girl self-image is way too low sometimes i do think z yeah z i have a very gay audience and they are reacting very they're, they're calling cap girl yeah is it a uk thing like what Let's have a bit of a, a little bit of a clarifying session and update on mm. things. Not that any of you care or should care. Um, we care, girl. <laughs> we are invested, let me tell you. I don't even know if I'm going to post this. I just think that I need to have a conversation with someone, even if that someone is a Canon camera. Quite a bit has... FYI, we love this setup. I'm a little jealous this is not my setup. I literally love everything about this. The colors, the background, the bed sheets, the sweater, like everything looks so good. Changed for me in the past, I would say nine or so months. And it's importantly changed in a way that I was not expecting. It's really had a lot to do with my decision to come off of a medication that I have been on for most of my adult life. Mm. Long story short, this medication was essential for me to exist in sort of a very high pressure situation such as university, such as working in a city, whereas mm -hmm. now I have relocated and I'm living in basically a very rural area of the UK in a farmhouse and my situation and circumstances are very calm, very still. And because of that, I have not found that I have needed this medication in order to function as a human being. Mm. Instead, I'm able to go hiking in the morning. Okay, first of all, I literally could never. I need like two, three hours before I'm even a person in the morning. But also very interesting, very exciting, especially since I am thinking about getting on medication. If possible, it's interesting to hear when people are getting off their meds because it's such a cycle. It's such a relationship, right? Some clarity and perspective perspective. I also have the luxury of the job that I have, which is very much sort of self-determined by me. So that medication hasn't been integral and a staple of my day-to-day -day existence. Weaning myself off that medication has been very difficult. It was a personal choice. It was not the choice of the doctors that I've consulted, but it has. What does that mean? What does that mean? Does that mean she... Okay, so the doctors, what does that mean? Why does she say that? Is she saying she's going against her doctor's recommendation? Or is she saying, wait, now I'm confused. Why does she say it that way? unexpectedly been quite successful so far and it has taken me over a year and nine months but I'd say that the nine months have been the crucial time the most recent nine months have been the most crucial time in terms of the transition period from being very reliant on these pills to suddenly not taking them at all mm. and I have been completely free of this medication for about three months now just under three months and I think the unexpected thing of of being off these medications is that I have discovered that oh hold on big reveal coming sorry Maddox and Ania said did she suggest it first I assume she decided to fully she decided fully herself okay so she made the choice you guys are saying like she made the choice and that's good okay that's good I have a sex drive and you know what there's <gasps> actually quite a lot about this Z got a sex drive for her and her partner alone. Good, good, good. Interesting, interesting. That I'm not happy about. I'm not happy that I have a sex drive. It's causing me great inconvenience. I have to go to the gym a lot more frequently than <laughs> I would like in order to just <laughs> let out steam. I also have felt sort of like an animal on heat in ways that I've never felt before. Suddenly my boobs have sensation. I am... So I will say not ovulating is a very weird thing. Like I don't ovulate on my birth control and I will tell you like I am experiencing like a very low sex drive um, because of it and low sex drive for me is probably still high for the average person but I yeah like I 
I've definitely seen a lower sex drive in myself since I've been taking my birth or since I have this uh, birth control in. And it will be interesting to see what happens when I start ovulating again. But like, yeah, that I mean, you do, you're doing something in your body. You're changing stuff. So like, it makes sense. Sort of very on edge. I think if you touch me, you might get a bit electrocuted at times. But because of that, people have started looking a lot more appealing to me in ways that they have not ever looked to me. People have not necessarily for me been something that I pursue because I want to have intercourse with them. I pursue them because I want a very intellectual connection with them because I want to find a companion for life. And that is still most definitely the priority. Mm -hmm, of mm -hmm. all my pursuits and endeavors in this absolute travesty that we call the current dating market but it is nonetheless oh i wonder if she talks about how the medication made her feel like a a vault uh, incel phlegm cell yes something that i see now being coupled with my interest in actually touching somebody and actually being physically intimate with somebody in a way this is a very vulnerable video of her very good that's very nice of her to share because like i'm sure this journey is very relatable to a lot of people um interesting way that i have never felt before and it's very opportune that something like the sponsor of today's video be educated thank you so much to be educated for sponsoring this video and i found myself going onto reddit forums and reddit forums i usually am always on just looking at things looking for ideas for content understanding what people are thinking what they are saying especially when it comes to dating relationships and sex i usually go on to reddit as an analyst I look to analyze things. I'm not invested in anything. My heart isn't in it insofar as I'm actually seeking out advice or recommendations. But as of late, I have found myself sort of stepping over the line in the way of actually really wanting to call out for help, really sort of resonating with a lot of things I've seen people saying on particular subreddits. And I think all of this sort of represents a bit of a transition in my life that I recognize from reading a lot of these subreddits that people are really going through it. I think I'm coming to the realization that I am a lesbian. Now, I say this not as a form of coming out because I- <laughs> She's coming out, girl. <laughs> I'm coming out. He wants the world to know. Personally, just I'm not really interested in that. But I say this because it's really not something that- I'm terribly happy about. And I know that this is controversial, mainly because coming out or saying things like this or expressing your sexuality is meant to be an affirmative thing. It's meant to be something that is very positive. Um, is Z neurodivergent? Because obviously, yes, right? Like, are we, we are assuming everyone in this space is, there's just no fucking way. I refuse to believe it, okay? There's just no way, bro. Her deadpan expression. And the idea that a lot of people unfortunately associate with somebody saying, I'm X, Y, and Z, and I'm disappointed is that they think that you're saying it about them or you're saying it about the whole concept of X, Y, and Z. So I'd just like to preface this by saying that me saying that I'm not happy with this realization that I am a lesbian is not me saying- <laughs> A lesbian. <laughs> I love it. I love when people discover things about themselves. It's like so fun to watch it happen in real time. That that is a bad thing in and of itself. It is not me saying anything about you and your journey or your affirmative connotations with being whatever sexuality you are. This is a very personal thing to me and I'm not here to represent anyone, to represent any community or what have you. So just keep that in mind, please, before you cancel me for saying this. And I think this is something that I've realized as a consequence of feeling far more sexual, of having a sex drive again or mm. for the first time in fact i've mm. always found myself able to appreciate the aesthetics or the sort of physical features of men of women of people in general but i've never necessarily found myself drawn to them so much that i want to touch them and be with them which is something that i am now experiencing when it comes to my sexuality and i found that that attraction that sexual attraction is exclusively directed toward and channeled toward woman and i want to talk about why i'm very nice very lovely it makes a lot of sense um actually if we look back i would say this makes a lot of sense for z yeah i would i well keep in mind the word incel was created by a lesbian 
literally the word incel was created in the 90s by a lesbian who was trying to express uh, a lack of ability to connect with romantic partners. And so Z had gone on this huge journey of being like an identified uh, incel or femcel, wasn't connecting with men, was having a really hard time. And then she gets off this medication and her normal like hormones, I guess, balance out, let's say. And then she finds out like more about herself. Like, look, even for me, before I really decide not to have a baby, I'm taking my birth control out for like six months. I just want to, or however long, I just want to make sure that I'm not, you know, because eventually if I like tie my tubes and then take out the birth control and then all of a sudden like something changes, I'm going to be annoyed. So I want to take out the birth control, feel how it goes and then go through it. I think like I love medication. I love pills. I love things that help us, but they do change things sometimes for some of us. So I think it's really responsible um, in some ways to like maybe double check with yourself, you know, maybe go off them, go on them. So, okay, I think I'm, I feel like this makes a lot of sense that she would have had a very similar journey to the woman that created the word incel in a lot of ways. Um, Like, no wonder she wasn't feeling very connected to men. So it kind of makes sense that she might be into women, like, right? Like, I don't know. I feel like it all kind of makes sense. Disappointed about this because this is something that I think a lot of people feel when it comes to their sexuality, no matter what sexuality it is. I think a lot of people feel a sort of disappointment, not because they are homophobic, not because they're transphobic, not because they're heterophobic or whatever phobia you may associate yourself with or you may associate somebody else with. I think that it's just because of the realities of that experience for you and how that may pan out for you. And it's perfectly valid to feel that way, even Mm. though we do live in a time where saying such things makes people think that you are a terrible person or that you are destroying the integrity of some community or whatnot. I think what I've realized and why I am so disappointed is because of how differently I'm treated by women relative to how I'm treated by men. And this is because of very... Which women natural things. Women are just naturally far more pickier and for very understandable and for very important reasons. It makes absolute sense. There's absolutely nothing wrong with being picky and choosy. I actually think that men need to be far more picky and far more choosy when it comes to who they form relationships with and connections with. I think we'd all save ourselves a lot of heartbreak in that regard. But I think what I'm discovering and something that I have known for a long time just generally as somebody who knew that I was attracted to the personalities at least of men and women is that suddenly I've gone from being somewhat relatively attractive to at least a reasonable cohort of men who I'd predominantly been dating like throughout my life to now suddenly being at the bottom of the food chain. (laughs) Let's just say that the realities of the matter even though no lesbian would want to admit this and no lesbian community or group group or microcosmic community within the broader lesbian community would like to admit it. Um, Black women who look like me are sort of at the bottom of the food chain. (laughs) And this. What? What's happening? What's going on? What's going on? What just happened? What? Hmm? Who? Um. Hmm. I feel like Z should go to tra- like therapy for like victimization trauma. Yeah, like she's definitely at the bottom of the food chain here in America. Girl self-image is way too low. Sometimes I do think Z, yeah, Z, I have a very gay audience and they're reacting very, they're calling you cap girl, cap, they're calling cap girl. Yeah, I think she needs to go to therapy for this. Genuinely, there's no fucking way. What? Is it a, yeah, is it a UK thing? Like, what? What? This is her bubble talking? Bro, she's self-loathing? Yeah, I, oh, man. Why did she, why, why, why do people, I love Z so much, but yeah, I think she has really poor self-image issues because she's obviously so pretty. Yeah, there's no way. I, yeah, I'm really, Mantis says there's no way she's at the bottom. This is self-victimization for real. Yeah, I think like sh- I really recommend therapy, bro. I just like what group are you fucking talking to? 
Miss Fishy says, isn't it a trend that black women statistically have a harder time on dating apps? Isn't that what she's referring to? Oh, is she? Fuck the apps, though. Because it's not happening in the communities. Or it is happening, maybe. But, like, what do you mean? Okay, hold on. ASMR says, as a queer black woman, I don't understand the sentiment completely. I don't know. Like, I know queer women in general have a hard time meeting their mates because it's even, like, it's harder to meet those people. But I don't think Z is going to discriminate against pansexual and bisexual women. So, usually lesbians I feel have a hard time getting partners because they're also afraid because they have internalized like homophobia they're like super afraid of dating pansexual bisexual women I doubt Z would do this I feel like Z is going to have more options now in a queer bubble and she'll have a specific kind of person she's trying to date what maybe it's a UK thing maybe it's a UK thing yeah maybe it is ASMR says it's the way black women are constantly portrayed it's internalized self-hate from racism it might be though Maybe. I don't know. Like, Kidology is so beautiful. I, I think she'll have, look, I doubt she's only going to date lesbians. So she'll have a big dating pool. But also, like, she's on the internet. And, like, not to be that person, but, like, great way to meet your partner is to, like, have, you know what I mean? Like, have them come across your content and be like, oh, I think this person is interesting. You know what I mean? She needs to move to Atlanta. Plenty of black women um, would, that would love to have her are her as arm candy I mean she's also like femme in that way so she's yeah I don't know like if she's is she pre-rejecting herself from the dating pool already like that feels so weird like we, gay people would be cel we're like we're celebrating you congratulations like this is so exciting because like now you can like limit your pool down like no wonder you've been having a hard time dating you kept dating men gross like <laughs> you know what I mean what I'm so curious like Huh. Okay, let's keep going. Let's keep Maybe we're misunderstanding. Maybe we're misunderstanding. So of course, is speaking about sort of lesbians in the Western world. And this is something that I'm going to have to come to terms with that I have been coming to terms with and just realizing as I've started trying. I'm sorry, femme women in general have a top of the hierarchy more than mask presenting people who have a much different kind of struggle from family relationships to like so many other dynamics so I feel like there's no way a femme presenting lesbian who looks like Kidology is at the bottom of any dating pool. How? How? To date, trying to form connections with people, trying to understand my sexuality. It is something that I've had to come to terms with and realize. And I think that this does mean that for me, the prospect of finding somebody and being intimate with somebody is going to take a very long time. I doubt that I will be in a relationship with a woman anytime soon i give it a decade dating a woman is a very different game but also not when you're like fully know what you're looking for you know what i mean petition to get kidology to move to the usa bro she'd kill in the states bro she'd kill in the states from my understanding she's mostly dated women or men over the years right guys has she been dating women like really because i keep hearing about a lot of men she's dated but i don't hear her talk about girls often which is pretty normal um you know what i mean um let's see at the least at this point wait why why this does mean that for me the prospect of finding somebody and being intimate with somebody is going to take a very long time i doubt that i will be in a relationship with a woman anytime soon i give it a decade at the least at this point and this is something that someone needs therapy this is a trauma issue this is a trauma issue. I just, I can't believe this is not a trauma issue. I refuse. I'm principal. I refuse. I love her so much, but I refuse to believe this isn't trauma. No, I don't. I refuse. I refuse to believe it. I refuse to. I'm so sorry. No. This is trauma, bro. I'm so sorry. You cannot. I know what you're saying. Like, maybe it will take 10 years to find somebody who's like your partner, but that's, it depends on how you think about life. You might never meet that person. But you could be dating anybody tomorrow, right now. There are probably lesbians or bisexual or pansexual girls in your DMs right now. Like, there's no way, you know what I mean, that people aren't, like, very, like, there aren't gay women right now who are like, what? You're, like, because look, from my understanding, girls could have slid into her DMs before. But like I said, there is, like... There's some stigma in the gay communities about dating, like, bisexual, pansexual girls. But if she's, like, a lesbian, she's going to have, like, I think more options. Trauma from what, though? Abandonment. Kidology has abandonment issues, um, physical attractive issues. She literally thinks she's unattractive. 
Like, kidology, rep- like, if you identify as an incel or a femcel, you have fucking trauma. You have problems. If you identify as an incel, femcel, in the new age terminology, you have fucking trauma. Like, you, you can't, you can't ide- just identify as single. There's no reason to identify with that word unless you're going for the complete original, ide- like, word for it. But if you're identifying with that word now, that's trauma. Because normal people, guys, just say they're single. You know that, right? Like the normies, me, I'm sorry, this is not my trauma. I would just be like, oh, I'm single. Why would I ever identify as an incel or femcel? Like you're just single. That's what it's called. Okay. So like, again, when you identify with these words, when she says I'm the bottom of the dating pool, which dating pool? Like, you know what I mean? Like which dating pool? I want to know like, where is this from? What bubble are you in? You know what I mean? I see quite a bit of. I see a lot of people being very disappointed in romance and in forming connections with people right now. And for... Well, okay. People are having a hard time connecting because when they do connect, their partners have so much fucking trauma, their partners won't let them connect with them. I bet if women came and pursued Kid, she would convince herself she wasn't worth it. I do. I do think that. I think that Kidology sometimes reeks of trauma which means like I don't even know if she would let someone get close to her like I'm not convinced because like she's not signaling that now she just projected onto the whole audience that she's undateable not good enough and it will take a decade for somebody to find her interesting like okay like now we've internalized that now our brains are going oh kidology is undateable it's a it's a self like it's a self you know what I mean fulfilling cycle or if prof, you know what I mean? Self-fulfilling prophecy or whatever. So what is it called? Self-fulfilling. Anyways, she's doing that whole thing. And I'm like, what's going on? What are we, why are we doing this? People want to date people that also think like highly of themselves. If you get down on yourself too much, your partner will start internalizing that and thinking, oh my God, did I date a horrible person? Should I break up with this person? Is my partner ugly? They'll doubt themselves because your negative energy will seep into your partner's subconscious. So again, like, There is something about this in which I think is like trauma based because again, it doesn't make sense with what is reality. Kidology is way too fucking attractive to have this such, to have low self-esteem this badly. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So what trauma occurred? What's happening? Because it's valid, but it needs to get fixed. I'm sorry. Like she should, she can't, it's not. Mm Mm-mm. I would say very understandable and personal reasons. I actually discussed this in a video that will either already be out or is coming out on the dating market right now and what a mess it is. So I won't go into too much detail here, but Mm. I think a lot of the narrative surrounding coming out and being authentically you is associated with this very flowery imagery and language and notions that suddenly you're going to be loved, you're going to be with the people who you love, who you want to be with that you're going to be in this amazing community of very progressive very liberal minded very open minded very accepting people and the reality of it is really not the case the reality well not in rural uk girl adrian says i can definitely imagine black lesbian being at the bottom of the dating pool in rural uk okay well that's like her choice she moved to the, the country sad but totally realistic considering there's probably no gays and interracial relationships there okay well that's like a choice right we make choices That's what I'm saying. Like, you can't move out into the country. When I lived in Arizona, up in the mountains, guys, I did not socialize with any of those conservatives. They're all conservative. I'm not interested in meeting any of them. They all had babies before the age of 22 and were all divorced by 25. I was not interested. Of course, I wasn't dating in my city. If you're going to live rural in middle of nowhere, you can't date in your city. You have to date overseas or I married somebody in a different continent than me. Like, you know what I'm saying? So this is why I say, like, people aren't lonely. People have no relationship with themselves. Like, you don't have a relationship with yourself. It doesn't matter if you're in rural whatever. If you move to the country, of course you're not dating in your town. You're Now you have to date different countries, different towns, different cities. You can't have your cake and eat it too, people. If you live in the city because you want to be near gay clubs, you pay the high prices. If you want to be in the country, so you have seclusion and low rent prices, you have no gays. Hello, ma'am? So again, like, I feel like there's some sort of cognitive dissonance where people like want to have their cake and eat it too. You can't, okay? You have your cake in your hand, right? Okay. 
I have my cake. I eat the cake. I no longer have my cake. Yes, you can't have your cake and eat it too. That's not how it works. Okay. So again, I don't want to hear any fucking complaining from people that like, oh, I can't date people. I'm never going to meet people. Yeah. Welcome to life, bro. And also, what are you even offering somebody in a relationship? Nobody wants to be with a hot person who thinks they're ugly, bro. It's annoying. It's fucking annoying. It's like being with a skinny person that complains about being fat all the time when you're sitting here struggling, like when you're 20, when you're like literally like 100 pounds overweight and your partner's like, I'm so fat. And you're like literally looking at them. It's like rude. It's too much trauma. I see what I'm seeing more and more so is a reality of true loneliness and feeling alone, a lot of yearning, a lot of confusion, a lot of a sense of betrayal that one is not finding the people who one believes that they should be with or that they ought to be able to find. And I think in being alone, it sort of makes you feel bad and sad about your sexuality, about your sexual orientation. It makes you feel like, well, I'm going to be alone. So why am I like this? <laughs> and I think this is something that I'm feeling. I thought that with the return of my sex drive or the discovery, as it were. Loneliness is her trauma. It's because she's adopted and she got adopted by a bad person. I'm going to be an armchair therapist. This is me just giving my opinion. She feels abandoned. She's pretty abandoning herself. I'm not a therapist, but damn. Like. You should be excited discovering more things about yourself, but if you're always like it's always you should feel less lonely getting to know yourself, not more lonely, guys. But if you're still looking for validation and look, I'm a I'm a Taurus and also I need very little to no validation from the outside world. So to be fair, I'm speaking from my perspective, so I don't mean to project that onto her. But like literally, OK. Loneliness comes from a lack of relationship with yourself. And so the loneliness should get less when you get to know yourself more, unless you're always thinking the person that you are is only real when other people are interacting with you. And that's really difficult because that means you're in like a loop of just basically like you're going to be lonely forever. Because like your husband could die on you. Your wife could die on you. What are you going to do? Lose yourself? No, absolutely not. Discord said she is pretty negative. That's the one thing about Z that I love her so much, but she is very negative. She's a bit of a, a pessimist. And I want to know if she knows that about herself. And I don't mean to be so anti, you know, Brittany, she can turn me off. She, I would understand if she broke up her friendship with me over this, but with peace and love. I've never seen someone so beautiful and smart and considerate and thoughtful be so pessimistic about themselves and it not be about trauma. It's got to be about trauma. It's just, it's too much. I'm exhausted watching this and I'm just a friend. I'm not even trying to date her and I'm, my spoons are draining because I'm like, oh, like no matter what happens, it's negative. No matter what it is, negative. No matter what, ha like negative. And I'm like, Oh, what's going on? I swear like she could win a million dollars and she'd find a way to complain about it. And I don't, that's without judgment. God, I sound so rude right now, but I, that's the feeling. That's the signal she's giving. The signal is no matter how good her life gets, she's going to find a way to complain about it. Ooh, that is not a good place to be in. That is a trauma. Like that's a, that, you know, so again, peace and love. Um, I love it. I love her. I love her so much. But yeah, like I can't, this is, ooh. you know what I mean? Discord says she's a bit of a Debbie Downer. That's what it, it's not even like, she's not even a bad person, but this is trauma, right? Lewis says that negative spiral is so hard to get out of, but it's literally never ending. That's the problem is like, that's how that I'm saying. Like it doesn't match up with reality. She's way too great of a person in terms of like, overall for this to be the reality she keeps making content about. I thought this was going to be the next part of Z being optimistic. She needs to incorporate optimism into her life somehow. Maddox says, honestly, the reality she's living in, it boggles my mind. The negative self-perception and pessimism is a bubble I cannot ever step into. It's so weird. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Obviously, huge, like, hard childhood. 
Obviously, she has a lot of pressure on herself. She's learning so much about herself. This was a really hard nine months. So all of the love, all of the care, like all of the patience, obviously. But just like if this was my sister, I'd be like, hey, that's enough. I actually had a brother who was very pessimistic about being single and he was reaching much older than Z. And I said, hey, you are so fucking pessimistic. You don't deserve a relationship. I'm so sorry. Why would you want to torture someone with your negativity? And it's not about deserve really, but that is what I said to him. And he was like, what? And it's true. He realized it within himself that, oh my God, I'm the fucking problem. Now he's still single and not because women don't want to marry him. Women want to marry him. But now he's an optimist who got rid of his pessimism. And now he's realizing, oh, he just might be single because he's literally waiting for the right person. But now he's no longer lonely. My brother defeated the cycle of loneliness. He broke his pessimistic cycle. He broke it. He's no longer a pessimist. And he radically accepted that he's the fucking picky one, which means he's willing to be single and not feel lonely. He doesn't suffer from loneliness anymore. He's good. He realizes like, oh, this is me. I've done this to myself because truthfully, I'm not going to settle. Which when Z and I spoke was sort of the narrative she gave me. That she feels like a femme cell. I could be wrong. She can correct me. Because she's not finding the right connection with the right person. And now that we know she's a lesbian, that makes a lot more sense. But now if she's going into lesbian dating thinking like she's the bottom of the pool, the dating pool. Girl, no. Like, I mean, maybe because you're negative. Maybe because of your pessimism but not because of the way you look and not because of your brains and not because of anything else, girl. You are a successful YouTuber. You're highly educated. You have an interesting life. You're fucking gorgeous. It's not, it's the pessimism, girl. It's gonna keep you single. Uh, of my sex drive, I would be- Oh, and by the way, even if she becomes an optimist, remember, it doesn't guarantee you find the love of your life because the love of your life might not know how to get, in, like you might not run into each other meeting people and I would no longer be a quote-unquote femme soul that I would have sex again but that is not the case and that is proving itself not to be the case and I know I always say this because this is actually what I do believe when I talk about things on this channel but I do think we should be able to talk about these things honestly without feeling that we are burdened with the responsibility of a whole community and of people as I she's living so hard in the bubble still Who, who's this community she's talking about like she has to start with herself. Maybe it's the community dynamic. You know what I mean? What community is she talking about? She's upset she's a lesbian because she's not as dateable now. But that's only because she thinks she's not. You know what I mean? She's not disabled. She's not fat. Like she has none of the tenants that make people. She's not highly masked. Like she's none of the things that would put you at the bottom of the, like the truly people are like having a hard time dating in their pools. Not that I don't believe that because the lesbian and like bisexual community are more than happy to date diverse, but like she's not even diverse in that capacity. If anything, she's a little bit more conservative. Is that the problem? She got to get off Reddit. She's got to get off Reddit. Nobody's on Reddit. Like, like perpetual people who live on Reddit, like they're not, they don't have lives. They're absolutely going to die off single. Like don't go on Reddit either being representatives of the good facets of said community or just a representative that it is okay to be X, Y, and Z way. Because of course it is absolutely okay. There's absolutely nothing wrong, nothing shameful in being a lesbian and being whatever you are. But that doesn't mean that it can't be and isn't disappointing for many. And I don't think we should deny those feelings to people who are not fortunate enough or are not able to find kinship, to find community, to find love within their sex. Actually, she might be a femme cell because she got that incel mentality. Mantis says she did the same thing when she was dating men. Incel mentality, that's not reality. Yeah. Wait, maybe she is like, because being an incel is like, um, is a part of the problem with the mentalities. Like it doesn't relate, but it's also very neurodivergent, right? I was talking to Rashad about this. Everyone keeps saying they're worried about men who are incels, but you don't want to acknowledge that a lot of those men are diagnosed autistic from all the documentaries we keep seeing. Is this a neurodivergent problem? Now, CJ says, I think that's part of the problem. She's conservative. Now, now Z would argue. Z was upset that FD Signifier and other people kept calling her conservative because she feels like she's a progressive. But she's obviously complaining about progressive bubbles. So that's why she is like, you know what I mean? Like, that's the problem.
Kenny says she's a conservative, though. She's criticized right before. She's an independent thinker. She's not an independent thinker if she's always mad at the bubbles. You can't be an independent thinker and live your life around other people. I refuse to believe this. If you're an independent thinker, then what the fuck does it matter what other people are doing? This whole video is basically about how, like, sh the bubbles, the bubbles, the bubbles, the bubbles. What well, part of being worried about the bubbles means you're an independent thinker? sexuality or their sexual orientation. And I think it should be okay to feel this way. I, for instance, at least by the standards of lesbians who tend to be very, very progressive and very far to the left of the political spectrum, I would probably be considered conservative oh. or at least- Oh, <laughs> she read our minds. <laughs> socially conservative and not in like a good way but in sort of a rather pejorative yeah way. obviously you're not gonna date a hardcore prog like progressive leftist bro obviously you're not right okay. and so for that reason i already no 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 why do you guys keep saying she needs time to figure out her sexuality she's been gay this whole time to clarify z was never straight she's always been bisexual right so i don't know why we're pretending like she needs time to figure out her sexuality she's just cutting men out she doesn't need time to figure out she's a lesbian. You're, you've always been gay. Being a lesbian doesn't change being gay. She's been gay this whole time, guys. The only difference is now she doesn't have to date men. Cool. Great. Amazing. Now you've limited down your dating pool in a positive way. You want to, guys, you only need one person. She's monogamous. Limiting down your dating pool is a positive, not a negative. It's only a negative if you think having more options is a positive, which is crazy. You want to meet three of your soulmates at the same time? No, you want to meet one of them and marry that one. That's what you want to do. So obviously, like, this should be a positive. But she's been gay this whole time. She doesn't need to. She's always been gay. She's just now not dating men don't necessarily feel at home exactly i'm also as i would say i'm quite vanilla in appearance okay uh in <clears throat> my sort of ideas of how i want to live and exist in the world of my particular social mores that i subscribe to personally and i think because of that i do find it very difficult and i have always found it quite difficult to befriend or associate with people who are of my age group and of my generation 90 percent of my friends are boomers or gen x's and i have found myself also in terms of my attraction <clears throat> just attracted to older people for that reason and for other reasons as well which i'll maybe we'll get so on a planet of like eight billion people she's saying the only people i get along with is old people and that just tells me like you can't be socializing it's like when i was a little girl and i internalized like i don't get along with women but like that wasn't true all my besties were women everyone i know is women i love women but like you tell yourself like you don't get along with women because you see other girls fighting but the truth is is like oh i get along with women fine i just internalized like other people's stories like i never like so what some people are mean girls cut them out girl i love women i get along with women okay so I feel like, oh, I don't get along with people my age. Yeah, because you're hanging out with the ones that don't have your values and you want validation. That's why I was very critical of her FD Signifier video because she kept wanting validation from them. Why? They're not going to be your friends. Why are you asking the weird people at a different group, like in a group bubble? Like, why are you asking a different group to be your friends? You were never going to get along with them. Like, what are we doing here? And like, the problem is, is like, um, she doesn't know, like, I think she, because she has, to, that's, that's the problem with like not going to therapy or not like tackling like genuine trauma and not that Z isn't working on it, right? I don't want to insinuate that. I'm sure she's working on it. Is that you don't know why you do anything. You don't even know who you are. Look at me saying like, guys, do I have autism? Do I have like ADHD? Like I need to get assessed because like this will, maybe I'll change. I'll be on meds. Maybe things, will, but like she obviously has something in terms of discovery that I get excited every time I discover something. I'm like, ooh, Cool. But my life isn't centered around dating. It never was. That's the problem. Is Z keeps coming back to dating, dating, dating. Da who fucking cares about dating? Even if you're a lesbian, who fucking cares about dating? You cannot, listen to me, this isn't just for Z, this is all for all of you. You cannot revolve around your life around dating. It cannot be that important. If you keep making it the center of your life, you will continue being lonely and distraught. Because your life will be dependent on connecting with somebody else. And if you're looking for the, the, the one, you know, the kind of love they write about in storybooks, the kind of love of like the whole universe comes together, then you have to honor the fact that that's rare and very hard to find in a world where 50% of people are getting divorced. People are obviously not finding that. Hello? So again, this narrative of like, I want to be loved. I don't want to be lonely. Like you guys are associating that with like the most toxic associations of love. 
I just don't feel like people are being very honest about what they want because they don't even know what they want. So the more you discover about yourself, you should be happy and excited. Like you have more of an understanding of yourself. And then that person can seek out a relationship with somebody else. I mean, Ugh. Adrian says most therapists won't call you out when you have a victim mentality. Unfortunately, at least that seems to be the case. I don't know if that's the case. My therapist was really blunt. She also, to be fair, like didn't have to because I don't have much of a victim complex, to be fair. Um, but I'm not sure. K.O. says she also lives in a small rural town in the UK. I bet people in her town skew older. Well, it doesn't even matter. I think she always liked older people no matter what, which by the way, I used to be an ageist in my content back in the day. I used to make videos about how people my age are not cool and I only like older people. Guys, all my besties were my age. It's an illusion we tell ourselves. It's not real. We form our reality. Our life is a reflection of what we put into it. Karma, our life is a reflection of what we put into it. We are responsible for our lives. We are responsible for our lives. So if something is like not going the way you want in your life, look in the mirror. We are, we, we, okay? So it says people often seek relationships so much because they don't feel seen, but they often don't even see themselves as cliche as it sounds. No, it's literally true though, right? HH says some people only pick therapists that validate them and ditch the therapists that call them out. True, human's gonna human. We're gonna self-sabotage, right? It just is what it is. Um, I'm living in the UK and the queer community here is literally popping. Well, I don't think like Z lives in the proper, like I, th I don't think she lives in the city, right? She lives in the rural part. I don't know what that means. So that, but even if she did, like maybe you're not social. Maybe you don't want to go to bars. Maybe you don't want to, again, if you're not a person who goes to bars, you've got to meet your partner where you would hang out. And then you have to accept that you might not ever meet them. That's the part that I'm not hearing from anybody, except that you might not meet your partner in this lifetime and figure out how you're going to live your life anyways. Who told you you had to be partnered? Who brainwashed you into thinking you have to be partnered? Who did it? Who did it? And don't give me this whole like it's our biology. Like doubt it. Our Your biology tells you to do a lot of things. Okay. Figure it the fuck out. Okay. Figure it the fuck out or stop complaining. I really don't like complainers. You know I don't. I'm sick of the complaining get into in another video but you know you'll have to subscribe to see that and so with all of these things I found myself not exactly happy <laughs> I found myself discovering something about myself I've found myself discovering something very important and very crucial also sorry one last thing is she does this thing and I love Z so much I'm just trying to preface this because I know she's a real person with real feelings and I really really like her but she keeps saying like nobody wants to have this conversation nobody wants to have the real conversation girl it's because when you the conversation isn't that real you're self-sabotaging like you're too pessimistic so if everything is bad no matter how it happens to you then the only conversation you need to have is like a therapy one you know what I mean that's why no one's having the conversation because we all had it with our therapists but I'd say that at this point in my life that is all it is. It's cruciality. It's the crucial things that I'm finding out. There's no happiness or anticipation, positive anticipation in that discovery, in these discoveries about myself. And I don't know why I'm making this video. As I said, I do not know if I'm going to actually put this out onto the- Attention and validation. Attention and validation. That's why we make it. Attention and validation. We want to be seen and heard and we keep seeking it out in the wrong places. But hey, at least we're getting paid. The channel, if I do, then I'm probably in quite a desperate place. <laughs> but I guess I'm making this video just to find out if there's anybody else out there, if anybody else feels this way. And I reckon that there are a lot of people who do feel this way. I don't think that this is a thing that I just feel this sense of finding out your sexuality or accepting your sexuality and being disappointed by it. I'm sure there's heterosexual men and women who are like, oh God. <laughs> I'm sure there's trans people out there who are like, oh God, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so I think that we should just accept a bit more of this feeling of why me? This ruins all my plans for the future. Um, <laughs> not that I don't know how this changes anything. 
she was always bisexual. What does it matter if she's only, how does this change anything? You know? <laughs> Bun says she's secretly making this video to find a girlfriend. I mean, that would be a strategy, but she probably doesn't want a girlfriend that's attracted to negativity, FYI. You know what I mean? But yeah, it's always like, it's good to use your content. I did that. I used my content as a little, like a little dating signal and it worked. Found me a husband and everything. <laughs> It works. I did that. I literally did that for three years. I was like, hey, I know you're out there. Email me. Message me. Who are you? I know you're out there. Who is it? You know what I mean? But yeah. Hmm. If she's always, that's what I'm saying. If she's always been queer, I don't know how being a lesbian should change anything. There's a queer people with internalized homophobia and transphobia. Of course. Of course. Maybe she has internalized like homophobia a little bit with the bisexual maybe she thought she was gonna end up with a man because it would be easier even though like no it's not you know what i mean that i had any plans for the future but just speaking generically this ruins i guess the image and the life that i thought i was going to have because she thought she was gonna end up with a man hmm yeah i guess as a queer person my whole life i just like i went back and forth with what was more efficient in terms of dating because i don't hold on to imagery very like it depends on my mood but like i will say that i was fine with whatever it ended up being it's just every path would be totally different so yeah maybe she did think she was gonna end up with a man um hmm. and now i feel a bit lost i feel incredibly lonely i feel like i'm sitting <sighs> Mm. at the bottom of the parapet and that there's no way to get up there's no clarice <laughs> looking over saying that she's going to save me and me saying fuck you bitch save me so uh, she's not she's not bisexual now she's a lesbian now she was bisexual and now she's a lesbian so she's ruling out men now because she's a lesbian but she thought she was bisexual um yes i think that's that's how i'm feeling but anyway as i said i'm just putting this out there just to see if there's anybody else any late bloomer lesbians feeling a bit lost feeling a bit alone any just anybody really feeling kind of i guess disenchanted with their it doesn't okay she was having a hard time dating when she was dating men she had dating a women doesn't change anything even if she was straight she still wasn't finding a man she was dating men and couldn't find one. So being a lesbian doesn't change anything. She's still single. She keeps like, she's doing this thing where she's, she's doing this jump in logic I don't get. What is happening? A romantic future and with, I guess the people, I wouldn't say the people that they're attracted to, but the realization of being attracted to particular people, but realizing that it's gonna be either greatly harder than you thought it was going to be to be happily in a relationship with somebody or that you're just afraid or you just feel sort of alone yeah i guess just alone <laughs> so anyway i don't really know what this video is this is just i really hope she's going to therapy because i swear to god if this is another case of somebody just going to the internet this is just trauma like this is just this is what i'm saying the loneliness epidemic is self-inflicted it is i don't believe these people actually want to understand that it's not about being partnered if you've convinced yourself that your whole life is about being partnered, like, of course, you're going to be lonely. What if your partner dies on you? Pay attention to the details. Being partnered doesn't fix everything. It's a very difficult thing to integrate your life into somebody else's. And on top of that, you could die on them. So when is your life going to be shattered after your partner dies? That's not good. It just feels very codependent to be like, I need to be partnered me rambling about myself and life thank you so much for watching and thank you so much to be educated for sponsoring this video i really do appreciate it and i really do think that you should check them out they are absolutely phenomenal as i said be educated has helped me with a lot right now so i do thank them and of course as i said thank you so much for watching and for supporting this channel please be respectful and understanding in the comments uh i know um, somebody's going to probably try and cancel me for this but oh well <laughs> We live. I don't know. Parallax says being on partner does suck though. It never sucked for me. I just refuse to believe this. I only think being on partner can suck for you if you do not have a fully lived experience life with yourself. I truly believe this. There's no fucking way. Being, maybe it's the Taurus in me and I fully accept that that could be the case. My personality type <laughs> led me to being and having this experience 
But there's no way that after I had an introspection like relationship with myself that being partnered or being unpartnered could ever suck. Because being unpartnered is always better than being partnered with the wrong person. What does it mean to be partnered? If you found the right person, then you wouldn't be unpartnered, right? Like, I don't get it. Parallax says being unpartnered means, to be clear, having planned my life with a person and spending 15 years with them with them in it, then that ending, not just being single. Lakar says, what the fuck, Britt? Don't discount other people's experience just because it doesn't match with yours. Lots of people are lonely without a partner. Yeah, but I think that's wrong. I'm going to put a prescription on you guys. Look at me. I think it isn't reasonable. Like, I don't think it is. I think it's a sign that you're not complete as a person and that like you're not experiencing loneliness in a way that is within reason. And I say within reason because, again, if you're coming from a healthy perspective, then you have to radically accept what partnership is. Partnership is about consent. Partnership is about asking a whole other human being to live their life with you. That is a big deal. And look, my partner says I'm very good at this. And he says, like, it's kind of unfair, like the way that I, I my brain does this and other people's like don't do this. But like when I see the data for something, or I understand a concept. My brain just goes, OK, radical accept, because like, what are you going to do about it? So maybe it's about that. You know what I mean? Where I'm just like, yeah, it is what it is. Adrian says y'all didn't grow up Catholic and romanticize being a nun that just helps people and prays all day. True. Maybe it's the Catholic way where I'm like, what do you mean? What's wrong with being single? <laughs> Maybe. <gasps> no, no, no. Parallax says she isn't discounting my experience. She didn't know it. She thought I was bitching about being single. Well, to be fair, I also hold the belief that if you end up divorcing somebody, like unless there was abuse like they weren't also your soulmate like to some extent because I believe in like people that are highly compatible for you and I think most of us settle into relationships that are going to end in divorce which is why again like you cannot get married to fulfill your loneliness because it doesn't help my partner didn't change my loneliness getting married did not change my loneliness why would it change it when I wasn't lonely before right like that's what I'm trying to say I'm trying to say like why would having a partner change your loneliness? When it's always about you. The meaning crisis is not about having a boyfriend. It is about the relationship you have with your consciousness. That is my argument. My argument is that loneliness is not, being about, is not about being partnered. Feeling lonely, feeling like, oh, starved for like social connection, sure. But like being lonely has nothing to do with partnership and I stand my ground on that. Discourse says I was totally fine with being single until the last few years. Lots of things have changed. Bubbles were popped. And I think that being in your 20s is just really difficult transformation, transformative, transformative experience for some people. Like this is the time where most people or most of my peers are already established a relationship or in an established relationship. And it's something hard to be the odd one out. But that's a social difficulty. That's not an internal one. Right. Like that is a social difficulty because you're referring to the bubble. So now like that's a reference to the bubble. That's not a reference to yourself. You're not referencing your internal workings. You are referencing the bubble. I feel like the odd one out in comparison to who? People around me. That means you are living for the bubble because now you're saying that I'm going to judge my station of happiness on what other people are doing. So the question is, do you want to continue doing that or not? Because that's a choice. But that's also a part of your journey. Right? Like anytime you use language of like, well, look at what everyone's doing around me. Okay. So now you're making your life about other people. Oh my God. If I just have a partner, I'll be less lonely. What? What are they? A dog? You know what I mean? Oh, yes, Biza. People feel lonely in whole ass marriages. Literally. People are so alone. The divorce rate is like a reflection of that. Right? So again... Oh, so Parallax, you said I was just lo as lonely before, during, and after the marriage. So then why does it suck being unmarried or divorced? Like, that doesn't make sense to me. You know what I mean? It doesn't make sense to be like, I was lonely through it all, but also it like sucked. Like what? TJ says, so you're so solution focused. I'm completely solution focused. I absolutely am. Actually, my partner and I were discussing like whether or not I'm autistic or whether or not I'm just solution focused. So as an example, he says, you do this thing where you will forgo any social expectation of you to get what you're like to fix a problem. 
and it looks autistic, but it's not autism. You just literally don't give a fuck. And I was like, maybe, maybe that's true. Like, okay, I was telling him how I would like at the grocery stores I worked at, I would have bosses and I would be like in front of employees. I'd be like, hey, you look very handsome today. Is that, does the blue match your shirt? Give me a raise. And he'd be like, what? I was like, I read an article that said women don't ask for raises. Give me a raise. You look very handsome today. Wow, is that a new suit? Give me a, give me a raise. And it would be like a joke, right? It's like a joke, but I'm also doing the thing that it is against social expectation because one, I was told that social expectation will make me poorer and I don't wanna be poor. And two, okay, it does make me look autistic, but it's not autism. It's literally me saying, hey, if the solution is to ask for a raise, give me a raise. Oh, you need a compliment? Cool, your eyes look very pretty. Is that your, is your, are your pants tight or is your booty just uh, peachy today? Give me a raise. And then people are like, what? And the same thing with like, oh, girls don't like to ask boys out. Okay, I'm attracted to you. Do you want to go out with me? Yes or no? Yes or no? Do you want to go out with me? I'm into you. Yes or no? It doesn't always work, by the way. I've approached men that have rejected me. Oh my God. Whoa. Because men don't actually want women to always pursue them. Some of y'all want to be the pursuers. So again, I've done that to men too. I walked right up to them. I'm like, I'm attracted to you. Would you like to go on a date? I'll pay. And that sometimes works and it sometimes doesn't. If that isn't autistic, God save us. I'm just saying maybe it is autistic. But the point is, is like, I don't know what the fuck games you all are playing, but I will beat them all. Okay. And if you tell me like, this is what is expected of me, like pff, by whose rules? Because if the expectation is women don't ask for a raise, so I'm not going to get paid more. Fuck that expectation. Right? Like fuck that expectation. So again, like in my defense or in my, to be fair, don't compare yourself to me. I want what I want out of life because I'm going to die. I'm going to die. And I refuse to die lonely or afraid because I didn't live my life and I depended on other people to make me happy. I refuse. It doesn't always work. But for the most part, I have benefited from going against the social expectation. And then, of course, you stand out. So everyone thinks like, oh, this girl's unique and interesting, but I'm not. I'm just like, okay, what's the rules? I'm going to break them all because I can. Because I can't. Everyone is so pussy. I'm just going to break them because I want what I want in the end. Oh, my God. You can't, like, marry a guy you've only known. Oh, my God. You can't just move. Oh, my God. Brittany, you can't just be a lesbian. Brittany, you can't just. All of it is a construct. I can do whatever I want. Okay. Obviously within reason. But, like, just because you're too pussy to do it doesn't mean I am. It's difficult out here and we make it the hardest on ourselves. We are our own worst enemy. We are absolutely the reason that our life is difficult. It's like the people who are making 200K a year and complaining they don't have money. Girl, if I see one more TikTok, if I see one more TikTok of people making $200,000 a year and saying that they feel poor, if I see one more goddamn TikTok, if I, if I see one more goddamn, you are the reason you're bad with money. I am the reason I am bad with money. I make enough money not to be bad with money. And I'm bad with money. If I see one more person making $200,000 a year complaining that they're poor, I'm going to, I'm going to, okay? If I see one more, per you're bad with money. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Da 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 da